You talking about your homework in here? Yeah. Yeah, it's due Thursday. Cool. Remember Tuesdays we're gonna do oh. in class work, and then mm -hmm. Thursdays we'll do the presentations of your solutions. Oh, okay. Okay. Being due on one twenty six. We today. Oh well, <clears throat> I, I can override that, right? Yeah. It's what I say that goes. <clears throat> Uh, that must have been from a pre-existing. Uh, pre-existing uh, schedule. Okay. All right, guys. So class has started. Technology is not in. Uh, on your desks. It's not even in your minds. You're not even thinking about it. Okay. Uh, as you know, you should bring your book to class. So I want you guys to start reading through section 1.3, construction problems, and start solving the problems together in either groups or individually. I'm going to step out for a second, and when I come back, I only want to hear talk about mathematics and not unrelated subjects. Okay, good. If we can stay on task, then uh, we can actually achieve our true potential as fledgling mathematicians. Yeah, oh, never mind. That's it. I'm done. I forgot to do that thing for the application. Does Chris any one of the lines when you look up the one that I see? I see it. I figured it out. No, it says. No one can solve this construction problem. So the sculpture. Oh, I just did it from a different brain. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got more reasons than your brain? I'm just different, still different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that may be true. Imagine if those drugs. Not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Like, wherever that horseshoe part is, like, it's like basically like a little triangle. Um, like where it should be. Yeah. There should be like two. Instead of three. Yeah. And it turned out no one can solve this construction problem, so it's a social group. Now make one. Three. 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 Three.
Broken. So, yes. That's a feat. I can go look if there's some in the math office. The chances are that there are. But yeah, it would help to have a compass, actually. Uh, it would help to have a compass um, just in your backpacks from now on for this class. This is a geometry class, so you're going to need a ruler, a compass, something to write with. <laughs> We don't have my own. I've got a nice one. Are you a lady? Yeah. Okay. Is this a problem where you um, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. Give the segment AB. Yeah, if I could just put a, a point on the ray that is to the length of AB. Like, I guess it's all I can. Can we go and go to the first class? Maple type of 
are in stock. <clears throat> so a compass is kind of like a one of those things that will be useful for this class. Would anybody like some rulers and some actually this fulfills the purpose of a ruler and a curved device. So Here's some homework. Uh, we've got some paper for uh, calculus. I'm also uh, forwarding you people who've submitted it online. Okay. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> um, I'm going to send you an email of the solutions that I've scanned. So that's just for 1.1.
Let me know if you guys have any questions. If you want to discuss something, I'm going to be over here. I'm going to scan something real quick. Oh, here's some compasses that have chalk on. Uh, a chalk compass. That helps. I guess you go on the board and try this out. You guys are going to have to share, so I think there's only three. You're on the chalk. You don't know what sharing is. One more in my office, actually. So, Here's one more. And for drawing on your paper, right? 
like turn around that to make a circle or something like that. Yeah, just trying to do my part to give you guys all the resources. You guys go, we can use these circular outlines. Query? Yes, sir. Uh, when it says that the compass will be used to draw circles and also to copy segments, does that mean we're not using a collapsing compass in these problems? Or? Um, it means, like, let's say you have a segment. Well, what do you mean? I could either use a ruler, you know, and measure it. Like and say, okay, it's about like 23, and then copy uh, something that's of 23 length. Or we could use this as like a measuring device. Say that, okay, this extends out this much. So I can just place this somewhere and, uh oh, just, you know. Right. Pull it backwards. So theoretically, you could copy it okay. at any segment right. using one of these. And when I've done thinking about this before, we always had the unmarked straight edge in a corner. Yes, that's that's correct. Usually, the straight edges oh, okay. don't have rulings. Mm -hmm. So and the and the compasses collapse. So that that second method wouldn't be possible as well. So, yeah. Oh. So, um, the, if we're assuming that as soon as you click up the compass off the board, yeah. it collapses back, you can't use it to do that. Oh. Are you just matching these ones? Huh. My, the compass I had before I broke it was like, you can like set it to a certain setting and it will move from that setting. I know there are some compasses that do do that. I guess you have to be like careful and not allow it to um, get compressed. Then theoretically, it's possible, right? This is all about it being um, like feasible for outlines for circles. So the the ge geometers of antiquity, when they had um, proofs or when they constructed shapes, they they only used these tools. Mm -hmm. So. That's why we're only using these tools. Um, your whole compass thing, yeah, I mean, that could be an issue, but you know, assume that, let's see here, look, you have a compass that it will hold it in place. If you turn this knob, it'll tighten it so it won't decompress. Some of them are very loose, but a real compass should be like, you can, you should be able to configure it to where it doesn't do that. Okay. So that te technically you could use it to measure a segment, put it down, and then copy it. Okay. Yeah. Great questions, though. I should have, uh, you know, uh, included this in the syllabus that you, you will you will need these. But it is my first time teaching this course, so I'll make sure to include that in the syllabus right away for the next time I teach it so that you guys or that you future generations know that I'm it would be help it'd be helpful to have a compass in this class. I have to say it's almost essential. Um, Yeah. 
Okay, I got those due dates changed for on Thursday on Canvas. Don't worry about that.
Yes, that is something we have a lot of over here. Anybody else want some chalk? Working on the board is a really good idea. I highly encourage it. Yeah, it's not here. At least that's what I got. Because there, it says a point that does not cross on the line. Construct the line perpendicular to the line through a given not on it. So you have a line, any kind of line you want. Yeah. And you have a point, any kind of point you want that's not on the line. Construct something that would do this, right? Oh, it does this with your text? Of course. Okay, right? Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. That's what I put on my paper, but I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah. Do you want that point to, to be on a line that will then intersect your line uh, at a right angle? I got it. So you start off with just some arbitrary line in whatever orientation and then some arbitrary dot yeah. anywhere. And then figure out, given this situation, how can I always create a perpendicular line? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That's yep. what I was thinking. Yes. Wonderful. I'm proud of you guys. Working diligently, I'm very happy.
So I did when I drew it like that. That's, that's oh, not, all right, that's not right. So basically, that's not. Yeah, okay. the way he did it right there was he just drew it with some given line, mm -hmm. okay. and then you're trying to create a line that's perpendicular to it, just through some. Yes, ma'am. Isn't there a symbol that means perpendicular? Um, Is it like that's a, a great question. Like a vertical line and a horizontal line? Yeah, you can say like um, A B is perpendicular to I don't know C D. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I just want to know a little crazy. That one is for parallel. Yeah. Perpendicular and parallel are pretty long-winded words. I would not blame you for using these symbols.
These were good at drawing circles. Pretty good. Although you can't modulate their radii. Let's be careful, they're kind of squeaky prone. <laughs> I just realized that earlier. <laughs> That's fun. Here's your time. Oh, you can leave it there. Right. Is that like a dotted line? Yeah. Yep. Cool. That, have you seen that video that dude at MIT? The professor where he like he like giving a lecture and then another lecture he's just like <laughs> The entire chalkboard. So cool. <laughs> no. Nope. I haven't seen that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this construction stuff is like like real, real bona fide geometry. So this is how they invented these shapes. This is how they prove an equilateral triangle actually has all the same sides. The way you construct it using just a ruler and compass should reveal that they indeed all have the same side. It's a consequence of another fact of geometry. I won't reveal too much because then it spoils the fun. But also, if you ask me, hey, how do you do this? I'm going to show you. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, like the reflection stuff, I wanted you guys to teach each other. Clearly, two reflections can be composed to make a, a rotation, and we discovered that together. So that was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. I want to have more of that kind of stuff. Oh, also, about square root of two being irrational. Assume it is, right? Like uh, Bailey said, square both sides. Now you follow your nose, right? So we can say two B squared is equal to A squared, right? So this implies that A squared is even, which implies that A is even. And over here, we make a fundamental assumption that if we assume square root of two is irrational, that A over B is in lowest terms, meaning that they don't share any common factors. So look at one half. This is the lowest terms expression of 0 0.5. But it, we could have also expressed it as 2 over 4. We could have also expressed it as three over six, yada, yada, yada. But these share common factors. Three and six share common factors. Two and four share common factors. A true pure rational number is one that they don't share common factors. So it's in lowest terms. So recall that A being even means A is divisible by two. We'll remember that. We're going to show that B also must be divisible by two, meaning it contradicts the hypothesis that they didn't share any common factors. So notice that if you have this right here, 
that that implies that a uh, uh, a squared must be divisible by four. Why? Exactly. The lowest even number is two. And so when you square it, it'll become four. So in the smallest possible case, a squared is four. And so it shares a common, it is divisible by four because four is itself in the lowest case. So this implies by definition that four divides a squared, which implies a squared is equal to four k. But recall a squared is equal to two b squared. So let's look at these two equations. We can cancel out a two, so I get two k, which is an arbitrary in integer, is equal to b squared. But that implies b squared is even, which then implies b is even, which contradicts the hypothesis that they shared no common factors. They would share the common factor two if they're both even, right? So that's a contradiction. So by contradiction, you prove that it is irrational. Because a, a even number, when you square it, it will become even. Like two squares, four. Um, four squared is 16. But an odd number, when you square it, it stays odd. Three squared is nine. Five squared is 25. So whenever you square a number, whether it's even or odd, it gets preserved. And so you can track that logic in reverse. I just ruined the extra credit on the test. So I have to come up with a geometry extra credit, okay? Not a number theory extra credit because it's technically a geometry class. Although number theory arises from geometry. The constructability of these shapes that we're talking about is actually how we constructed the numbers. Numbers got constructed this way. If you think about it, we can develop the integers by saying, okay, um, if this is unit length, if we just say this O to I is some unit length, create a circle, right? Then take O to I and make a copy right here. Then make a circle about, so this is centered at O, make another circle centered at I. So uh, you're going to get this. Uh oh, no, no. It's centered at I, right? So it's going to look like this. And then extend it and do it again. It'll be centered at this. So we can construct the integers this way. We could say that, oh, if this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. There's a series of circles because we define the unit length to be the radius of the circle. And so we can just make copies of that unit length and then put circles. And wherever the circle intercepts the line, that is what we define the next integer. That's what three is. That's what two is. That's what one is. Zero is where everything gets started at. So we'll call that the center of this circle zero. So we are actually constructing the numbers. Constructing the integers. So how would you construct one half? How can you construct the rationals? One half should be right here, right? Would you agree, guys? So take a look. If you just create a point here that intersects the two circles and a point here that intersects the two circles and connect them with a straight edged line, you can construct the number one half. The number one half will be defined as being this point right here, the midpoint between the zero and one. So number theory arises from geometry. Isn't that cool? To me, I always wonder what are numbers, you know? Numbers are concepts, right? They're just like these abstract concepts that we invent to try and quantify reality. But what's cool about geometry is you can make pictures out of the, the numbers, which gives you something more tangible 
than the abstract concept. It's kind of cool. You'll realize that all of the rational numbers can be constructed this way, but the irrational numbers can't. You can't construct the irrational numbers using a ruler and compass. It's really cool. I'm not going to make two sets of homework due on the same day. Okay. So I'll give you um, till Tuesday, I guess. You know what, guys? Due dates are kind of, you know, ha have it due by the time we have the in-class discussion. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about learning. I want you guys to learn. So I'm more than willing to change due dates and when they're due. Uh, to encourage you guys to absorb it and learn it as much as possible. That's all I care about. I care about improving you guys as mathematicians. Because in the process, I get to improve as a mathematician. It's a mutualistic relationship. I'm using you. That's what that means. Let's see what time is it? Oh yeah, class is not over yet. We still have uh, two, seven minutes. Yeah. So keep working. Oh yeah, sure. Anything you guys are stuck on or have questions? Are you, are you wondering like, how do I pull this off kind of thing? Or how do I know if I did it right? I like doing it. Like I, I learned a lot from our discussion on Thursday. 
Thursday? Oh, yes. Yeah, Get ready for more of that. Yeah, yeah, the only one that I had a question about was 27. Yeah. I was wondering along the lines that Caleb was. Yeah, from what I can tell, the problem is saying you have some arbitrary line, some arbitrary point. Given this situation, how can you always construct a perpendicular line yeah. that also is going through that arbitrary point that was not on the initial line? I'm open to being challenged as well. If you guys think I don't, I don't agree with you. Let me know. That way we can like have a mathematical discussion because that's what uh, class is all about. We we have a mathematical discussion, mathematical debates. That's what happens at conferences, you know. We're just simulating a math conference. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm just going to make homework completion. So if you did it, you got 100. So your, your learning is up to you in this class. I can provide like solutions to problems if you want. Um, but yeah, mostly the learning is on you guys. I'm going to make homework completion. But tests, tests will be is where, where I'm going to really Quote, you know, test you is on the exams. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's called a test. <laughs> yep. Sometimes <laughs> So I thought I had seen a lot of those pictures today, you know, and they didn't have like this major blank space. I had not seen a lot of those pictures. So they didn't just, that's cool. Uh, I literally just wrote down like four things. Um, no, no, I don't know. I don't know. I think you're okay. I think you're okay. Yeah. Okay, see, like mine is like, we're supposed to present. Have you taken abstract so algebra? Theory, 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 theory. Oh, you're not. Okay. The fact that. The fact that two reflections is like doing nothing at all is important in abstract algebra. Because we, we, we think of group operations as like geometrical operations on shapes. So. Doing reflecting a shape and then re reflecting it is as if you did nothing to it at all. So we call that the identity transformation or the identity operation. I thought you took uh, not yet. We can we can talk about stuff like that in here. Number theory was probably like my favorite class, like ever. And then I was like ready for abstract algebra. I was like, this is gonna be so much fun. It just was not as much fun. <laughs> Why? It wasn't as interesting to me. Why? Like, number theory was like, the thing I liked about number theory was like it covered like a more like diverse range of topics and abstract algebra. The, okay, the one thing was last semester. You said what? Is it abstract, abstract algebra was last semester? Yeah. 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 Semester at yeah, it was, I mean, I really liked it. It just wasn't as enjoyable for me as like number theory. But the thing I did like about abstract algebra was like, it was constantly using uh, modular arithmetic. Uh huh. And like, I love proofs that use modular arithmetic. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Okay. So, like, I like that part of it, but I wish we would have done, I, I've been meaning to tell them, I wish we would have done a groups first instead of, um, what's it called? Rings. Rings. Yeah, oh. I wish we would have started with groups. He started with rings? Yeah, he started with rings. Oh. I think it was like, because rings are like easier than groups. By like significantly in my mind, and I feel like if we would have started with groups and really like set the bar up here, then like the rest of the course would have been a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah I would uh, say that starting with groups is the appropriate way to do that. Um, because uh, a ring is added structure. You want to start off with the simplest structure. Exactly. Right? Uh -huh. Add levels. Because like that's what structure. that's what confused me when I was doing like group stuff. Was, like. Where's the other operation? Yeah. Where's the multiplicative exactly. identity? Exactly. Where's the multiplicative inverses? Well, we made it. We, we survived. We made it through a barrel. 
So what's cool about abstract algebra is it's it's an abstraction of what what is algebra and number theory. Yeah. You know, what are we doing here when we do math? Yeah. Well, we want to tie it into set theory. Yeah. And we want to say, okay, we don't want when we do an operation between two elements in the set, we don't want them to like fly off and no longer be in the set. Yeah. We want everything that we do to be self-contained inside the set. Mm -hmm. So we impose the uh condition of closure yeah. stuff like that really someone just invented that stuff yeah. and other people found you it useful yes yeah so you guys good work alexis all of you stayed on task for the most part you checked out five minutes before class was over, but yeah, that's because I don't have a printer at my house. I'm working on you guys. I don't have a printer at my house, and we have a collage in for one of our education classes. Oh, you want to go get that done? And I just wanted to print it out real quick. Okay. I didn't have a printer at my house, and I thought I'd print off enough pictures, and I didn't. Okay. So sorry. You're okay. I understand that this is not the only class that you guys are in. Go get that collage printed out because that's what life is about, right? Oh. Printing collages. Life is about math, man. It's not yeah. about printing collages, but they make you do it, huh? They really do. So, and honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm going to eat this one when I did. So, they make you do it for like homework. Mm hmm. Try to like print while I'm here. I see. Are expensive, though. Yes, they are, and so is the ink. Yes. Yeah. Well, you too. Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. I'm trying to get back on track. It's a, that live Tuesday 